Heavy menstrual bleeding, previously known as menorrhagia, is defined as blood loss of more than 80 milliliters per period. Of women of reproductive age, 20 to 30 percent suffer from heavy menstrual bleeding. Usually, no causative abnormality can be identified, and treatment is directed at the symptom. However, there are known causes of heavy menstrual bleeding that need to be ruled out. These include fibroids, adenomyosis, endometrial polyps, coagulation disorders, pelvic inflammatory disease, thyroid disease, intrauterine devices, drugs, and carcinomas. So how do we determine if there is heavy menstrual bleeding? In reality, methods to quantify menstrual blood loss are both inaccurate and impractical. Therefore, a clinical diagnosis based on the patient's own perception of blood loss is preferred. Here are some relevant questions to determine the heaviness of the period. Is the bleeding more or less than usual? Do you need to get up in the night to change pads or tampons? Do you have to double up on menstrual products? How often does soaked sanitary wear need to be changed? Is there any irregular vaginal bleeding or bleeding between periods? Is there presence of clots? Is the bleeding so heavy that it spills onto your clothes or bedding? Have you had to take time off work? Do you feel dizzy, short of breath, or do you find it hard to climb stairs? Did the heavy menstrual bleeding start at menarche? After examining the patient for signs of anemia, it is important to perform an abdominal and pelvic examination in all women complaining of heavy menstrual bleeding. This enables pelvic masses to be palpated, the cervix to be visualized for polyps or carcinomas, it allows swaps to be taken if pelvic infection is suspected, and it allows a cervical smear to be taken if one is due. The NICE guidelines for heavy menstrual bleeding suggest the following investigations. A full blood count, a coagulation screen only if there is a family history of coagulation defects, a pelvic ultrasound scan if the history suggests postcoital bleeding, intermenstrual bleeding, and pain or pressure symptoms, high vaginal and endocervical swabs, thyroid function tests should only be carried out when the history is suggestive of a thyroid disorder. An endometrial biopsy or outpatient hysteroscopy is indicated if there is postmenopausal bleeding and an endometrial thickness of more than 4 mm on transvaginal ultrasound scan, or if there is heavy menstrual bleeding over 45 years of age, or if there is heavy menstrual bleeding with intermenstrual bleeding. When selecting the appropriate management, it is important to discuss the patient's preference of treatment, risks and benefits of each option, the contraceptive requirements, that is whether their family is complete or not, or if they are currently using any contraception, the past medical history, that is if they have any contraindications to medical therapies for heavy menstrual bleeding, and of course, the previous surgical history on the uterus. The initial management of heavy menstrual bleeding in the absence of structural or histological abnormalities should be medical. The levonorgestrel intrauterine system can bring about a reduction in mean blood loss of around 95% in one year. However, it is not suitable for women wishing to conceive. Tranexamic acid is an antifibrinolytic, which reduces blood loss by 50%. Mephenamic acid also reduces blood loss by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. Norethisterone is an oral progestogen, which is taken 15 mg daily in a cyclical pattern, that is from day 6 to day 26 of the cycle. Gonadotrophin-releasing hormone agonists act on the pituitary to stop estrogen production. These drugs are used preoperatively to shrink fibroids. Surgical treatments are usually restricted to women for whom medical treatments have failed or for those with pressure symptoms from fibroids. Women opting for surgical treatments must be certain that their family is complete. Endometrial ablation destroys the endometrial lining of the uterus and prevents regeneration of the endometrium. The second generation endometrial ablation techniques include thermal balloon ablation, radiofrequency ablation, and microwave ablation. Another option is uterine artery embolization, which is performed by interventional radiologists and involves a cannula being placed into the femoral artery and guided into the uterine artery, through which embolization particles are then injected, reducing the blood supply to the uterus. 
This induces infarction and degeneration of fibroids. In the case of fibroids, transcervical resection may reduce heavy menstrual bleeding and is appropriate in women wishing to conceive. Lastly, hysterectomy or myomectomy may be considered in women who have heavy menstrual bleeding secondary to large fibroids with pressure symptoms. Prior to surgery, it is important to consider using GnRH agonists or ulipristil acetate to reduce heavy menstrual bleeding and fibroid volume. It is also important to assess fibroids using ultrasound or MRI before considering surgery or uterine artery embolization.